magical. So we have the Johnny Cash. Funny enough, I was watching Columbo the other day uh, with the episode with Johnny Cash in it, and uh, his guitar featured in that, and it got uh, knocked over, <laughs> banged by somebody, and uh, he was complaining about it. Hope it ain't busted his guitar. And uh, it was also, um, oh, sorry, it was also about the whole episode hinged around the fact that um, he hadn't taken his guitar with him on that plane flight um, for some reason, uh, which kind of proved that he was guilty or something. Anyway, the whole episode was involved in how our friend Johnny Cash was the moiderer. Very good episode, I have to say. Look at that for a zoom. That's the Damien Hurst skull of doom. So this thing is a beautiful old thing. I don't know how old it is now, but fitted with a Fishman. Got a kind of personalised number plate in there or some description. I'm going to get in there and have a look. Woo John Carter Cash. Johnny Cash. And this is number 138 of the... Uh, Martin, Johnny Cash babies, and um, the Steve. Steve is sort of he came by this on a what seems to be a permanent loan basis from a friend of his in the business somewhere, and uh, they very kindly loaned it to him, and he's he stayed uh, borrowing it forever, and he loves this guitar. I mean, hey, so look at this thing. When you start looking a close up at these things, my God, they don't even fit, do they? Hmm. Well, not so much done fit. Things have shrunk and moved, and look what's going on here. Actually, if I close bleh, close up on this, these things are flapping about. It's delayed. No, I don't mind that. At least it's a good close up. So it's a it's a it's a it's a. Can I zoom out, please? Oh, maybe I need to do it this way. It's a big sounding guitar. This thing has a, a big voice. It also has. Very precise tuners. I do, I have to say, like the tuners on this. Uh, it's been sound, sounded back a little bit to uh, a bit of a satiny finish, but not very carefully, I don't think. Um, we have these Grovers. Are they real Grovers? Are they Martins? They must be Grovers. Anyway, they're Grovers, yeah. So they are, I think they're very fine geared um, and really, really nice to tune. See if we can see. Oh, look, here's our friend, the gimbling thing. Close up. No. Anyhow, um, nice little stripey inlay detail there. Well, not inlay, but a, a little detail down there. But this thing's in, in pretty good nick overall. It's played, it's loved, it's used. There's nothing, um, it's not, it's not a, a show guitar, it's a used guitar, and um, it's got some wear down here I believe, We're getting close, we've got some wear, but not an absolute ton of it, um, not as much as the telly, but you can see some there, and if I zoom in with my one-handed grasp on my gimbal thing, that's not bad zoom in for these videos, anyway, so that's the wear, extent of wear, so really this needs strings changing, um, and what else does it need? It needs, probably does need that little bit reattaching if possible, um, it's a bit flappy, we'll see if we can stick that in, this is coming off as well, so it won't be a long time before these things actually fall off, so we might want to put some glue and hold those in place. Um, okay, well, so anything about this I've noticed, no, the it's all good. This um, nut, nut seems to work pretty well. I'll check the tune and I'll check out the way the strings go through it, go through the nut in a minute. But it'll need a clean. It's a bit mucky. I think these bits need sticking down. We need to put a new battery in, which I haven't got yet. Um, and then uh, we'll just give it a, a dust down. Nothing more or less than that, I think. Okay. So there was the close-ups. Ooh, off we go. And we are off and then we will try and zoom out cool and then we'll try and push this along and switch it off and then we'll switch off the gimbal hey i mean it's a bit of a faff but i like 
adding those close-ups into it much nicer. Okay, so the thing that this sounds great. Got a huge sound. Bass like you don't hear on many things. playing this. In fact, I do remember playing this the day we, we did hang out at the Justin Sandico studio and I played my, <laughs> I remember playing 39 on it, which I, I didn't know all the chords to it. Then there's a... Um, Anyway, save you from that. Um, that's just uh, too much, by the way, Steve, too much, too much wires on the peg. You don't need that much. Um, so it's a feel. I think, um, I don't know if I've had my hands on this before, but the first fret action is good. Um, my only concern would be make sure the tuning, the strings go through the nut. get the battery which is going to go inside here um, uh, and what, I, what I'll do is I'll just I'm, I'm kind of comfortable with the first fret action don't want to change how it feels we're, we're the, it is bellying a little bit um, bridge means the bridge is starting to rise up a tiny bit so it's getting a little higher here it's nice nice action down here um, and we don't have hardly any relief in the neck and again I'm not going to play with that But what I can do is I can reduce the action down here at the bridge a tiny amount. Now if we do that, we just have to make sure we don't disappear all first fret action altogether because I think we only need we'll only do a tiny little bit of adjustment, if anything, I mean really slight. But I think the main thing would be get these glued down, um, get it all cleaned up, we'll get a battery in there and we'll get new strings on. But Quite frankly, everything about this is nice to play. I don't have any worries about this. Uh, it's just grubby. Um, like I said, I don't need to really do anything to the nut. Um, the only one, the only slot I'm concerned about is this, or these two in the middle, which is often the case. Um, they look like they've been widened a little bit before, so I'll, I might add to that just so that we get a really clear, um, clean sort of run of the strings through here and I can feel it's, it's a little bit kind of crusty in this slot. <laughs> Let's just see if we can unhook everything. It's a fraction slow on the uptake but it's pretty good um, what I don't want to do is end up adjusting the, um, the the height any but I just want to make sure that we haven't got anything catching in the bottom of there <sighs> feels good just double check this one as well yeah, so while, uh, while I was in, took a break after the Telecaster, I went out and uh, met up with Karen, who uh, somebody I jammed a couple of times with, and she's a sax player and a guitar player, and she brought over her Gibson J45. I think it's the J45 acoustic. Um, 
um, and it was so badly back bowed that it wouldn't play but it's also suffering extremely from um, bellying so it's going to it's going to be um, very soon well, it's already unplayable so I recommended that we go and ahead and fit a bridge doctor but uh, she's happy for that and it's going to need to be the, the version of the bridge doctor that uses the print the brass pin better mm. still a bit sl laggy um, yeah so so we're gonna do that um, so she left it with me and I'm going to order in the uh, that version of the bridge <sighs> doctor um, it's a nice guitar though I think we'll put a tusk nut on it as well okay that's freed those up a little bit more there um, they're not perfect as in I think I would rather be playing with tusk on one of these but um, we don't have any direct replacements so I'm going to take this off right now <clears throat> we'll do the repair to the binding if we can get it to stick down now the thing about binding is you could use a quick drying glue like super glue um, However, my concern about that is the risk of sort of super glue sweat. Um, you know that horrible fumes that come off the super glue and then kind of can clag up your finish. And particularly if it's black, you get a sort of snow dusting around the repair, which if you're unlucky, can be difficult to remove. If you're lucky, you can get rid of it. But just um, it's not it's not the ideal stuff now <coughs> what I'm not sure about is whether it'll work with wood glue um, I suspect that might not be strong enough to hold it if it's a small little ah, I always get stabbed by that one yeah it may, may not be strong enough so we'll have to have a think there are other alternatives there's some resins and two pack resin so you can perhaps use it and stick with <coughs> okay so let's get the uh, pegs up now somebody said to me the other day about oh you're supposed to use the thing on the back of your tuning thing to remove the pegs right and the thing on the back of my tuning thing never works to remove the pegs right I'm telling you now so I know how to use my pliers gently so it doesn't leave any mark or run the risk of breaking anything so if you see me doing that it's not because I'm being careless okay so where where is the battery compartment should be velcroed in here somewhere <coughs> just put that off to one side a minute I might need these again I don't know if I'm going to lower this action any I'm nervous about that only so and so far as it's actually doesn't really need it so it might just be um, surplus to requirements okay I don't immediately see where the battery compartment is for this <coughs> follow the what's it oh is it it's not built into the side is it no no mm -hmm. to the end pin which I'd hope it would um, it's got to be a 9 volter isn't it really there's some other kind of anybody else know this kind of beastie goes into there that goes out of there let's just put it up on its end a bit. I can't feel Don't tell me it's a, it's a different kind of battery that goes in that unit I uh, have not seen that before. Well, I suppose if I just loosen this off a minute, it'll help me. 
understand holds tight thank you thank you right, the battery is trying to tell me That goes down the side. Oh, there's two. Oh, God. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> cool, Steve. Of all the batteries it'd have to have, I and mean, it almost wants a close up. Two widdly diddly dinky things that you do need the strings off to replace them, but I bet you I don't have a battery for those little devils. Bet you I don't. I used to have some spare batteries. Kicking around up here and, oh hell, do I really have, these could be so old, they could be, could be a big non-starter, but uh, probably got a, oh, what's it life on it, shelf, shelf life, blimey, blimey. that was a pack of billion year old batteries, and I'm sure it's the same as these, how would you get one out? You'd pull it from, hike it from this side, would you? Would it come flying out? Would it? Would it ping itself down inside your Martin? Would it? Probably. A little push, place to push it from under here. Something smaller. It's going to come flying out and I'm going to end up losing it. Um, I just want it to come out in such a way that I can catch it, if you please. And there's a prodding, sort of levering area in here, but it wants to be. Thank you. Is it this thing? Well, it is this thing, but God knows how much life this has got in it. 357 button cell. Well, I suppose there's one way of trying it. Hmm. It's not the kind of thing that I know what battery it takes, my dear boy. So, kind of anyone's guess, really, whether it's going to be have any life in it. It's the right size battery, but as I say, I don't know if it's got, got some juice left in it. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on, how come these are different size? What's going on here? This is mad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm pulling the. I've got different sized batteries in here. Oh my lord. I've taken out a smaller one. Well, look, I shall happily use this up. Even if it works. Now, which way around did it come from? Oh lordy. They look the same. Does it matter? Plus, minus. Okay, I see the pluses. Plus, <laughs> minus. Plus, minus. Um, we ought to try try it out. That's a thin one. I've probably wasted that one, but I don't really care. If these even work, I'll be amazed because they are pretty old. This is fairly standard too, but let us see if we get any response at all. Like I say, it will be quite amazing. Um, on. Uh, noise maker. Concern is I don't know how old they are. <laughs> let us uh, gently put that back in, and let us 
Um, actually, you know what? Let us gently put this off to one side a minute. Let us, let us, let us, let us do something. Keep that out of the way for a minute. I'll do that. <coughs> right. So, first concern. This is oh, blimey. Okay, that's pinged off there. So that's coming off. That's coming off. And I wonder. Uh, I wonder. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder. Uh, get some glue under here, stick it back, get some glue under there, stick it back. Um, difficult to know what the finish is like on this guitar. Um, but we could sort of protect it off a little bit. We'll put the base layer, make it as unsticky as we can. this off so that in case we get anything drop out of the way it's not going to be a major deal uh, what do you think super glue probably super glue I've got quite thick super glue but I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll use some super glue and I think we'll we'll look to tape it in place to give it to hold it it dries. So the question is how much is coming off? So that's almost all off really. Um, the question is do we, do we take the whole thing off? I think we do, that's going to fall off any minute. Yeah. If we don't, we just put on one bit then we're going to end up with one well stuck bit and one not so well stuck. But have too much choice right so what we want is we want we want some gripping in a minute so I'm going to stick some tape around there and pull it in as quickly as I can really um, once I've got some glue on it dealing in sticky glue at the moment, which is not brilliant. Um, as far along there as we can go really followed by pushing it into place followed by applying some pressure this is not helped by these other bits of tape sticking in the way to be honest could have devised a better way of sticking this. But we'll hold on to it for a minute. Um, I mean super glue is usually pretty good stuff. No, it's not that. 
<laughs> it's pretty good stuff, but it's right now it isn't doing what I want. Some sort of elastic band would be good. A pushing thing. Something like that. A little gentle clamping that way would be ideal. But in the absence of uh, an actual clamp, I shall do it by hand. Eventually it will stick. Steve probably hasn't even noticed the binding coming off. But that's my job. I'll just push it that way. Do you have any spill over? Now we've got a bit coming off here as well and a bit coming off there. That's not so bad. I wonder if we can a bit into there only a tiny fraction um, kind of the less important bit really but let's get a bit into the side spray it with some accelerator but I don't like putting that on finish and I don't know what it's going to do to it. <laughs> kind of know when it's ready and it isn't. You get a little bit of sticky up glue. Ah, oh, stick on, damn you. <laughs> See, normally with binding, tape is very good, but You've got no reach to get in here, so it's quite difficult. I mean, really, all you've got is bits of wood to clamp against it like this. Be careful because I don't want to scrape it since it's got sandpaper on these bits of wood. You could probably rig up something with a clamp, but. point where it sets which is good. I'm not going to worry about that bit on the other side. I mean the other thing we could do just to help it on its way is just to fit a bit into the gap between the two corners because it's lacking some joining material there. So there's a bit of room down this end. Just blob it on there to begin with and blob it on there to begin with. And then, basically, encourage it into the gap, and the same at this end. And wipe away, wipe away. I think, my dear friends, that will be our best bet for now. 
So this battery thing, I don't have to worry now because I've replaced them. Although, as I said, they're not the best batteries in the world. They're ancient, but they've still got some charge in them. But I'll leave these and show them to Steve and get him to get some more. It's, it's absolutely not something I would normally expect to have. It was just sheer chance I had those picking about. Right, so they can stay there for a minute. Okay, so let's gently remove this. Thank you. No, yeah, thank you. And same here. So let's just have a quick look at this. Wow, that's quite tightly fitted. Okay. Mm hmm, I see. Let's write a little something on here just for fun. Well, we know which end is which, but. I'll just mark it just, just avoid any mistakes. Base end, treble end. Okay, put that there for a minute. Get that out of the way. Right, so we have one mucky old guitar. Now, one of the things I think I'm going to do with this, since we're here, is I think it's probably a good thing to remove the tuners so we can give the headstock a refresh, right? So there's no wrong in that. Um, since we're at it. May never have been off before, but it's a, it's a nice option. Um, what I could do with all of this off, ten potentially I could buff, give it a buffing tomorrow, but we shall see. It may not have the weather conditions conducive to that. It's also got a skull on it, which makes that not an option, really. People never think about that when they put these things on, do they? So I'm going to put these in the, the front-facing fashion. I know which one was which, just out of respect. It's quite cool, they're very nicely made, these proper Grovers. So many times you see fake ones, most of the time, um, which, which aren't as cleanly made. But even with this uh, skull thing stuck on here, it still gives me better access to the front and back of the headstock generally, so I can get it cleaner. It's just a, a little refresh, and we might take a a hair's breadth off the saddle while we're here, since we can. I mean, it will be a very, very small amount. There's the shoe holes. I don't know, this might come off easily, but it might not. I'm 
not going to try prying it off just for the sake of it. So we do get an option to clean it up now. Get all these bits out of the way. So and cloth to remove the dust to begin with. And then cloth on the back. And then a bit of the old cleaning stuff. This is um yeah it's been roughed up or sanded down a little bit to take the stickiness out of it, which is not surprising. A lot of people much prefer that finish to play on. for starters and on that bit. I don't really think it even needs any polish. I think it will do as is. Just cleaner, fresher. We'll clean this up as well. Um, and obviously we'll also clean around all of the body here and get rid of as much of this dust and grime as we can, which will be a lot. Now a lot of this is actually pretty well ground in. You can see it, sort of grease blobs and stuff, and something around the back here. It's almost gritty with goo. Stephen. This probably will benefit from a, a little bit of the old polish actually. Get rid, rid of this ground in stuff. And the back is the clean bit because it's always rubbing against your clothes. Um, oh, right, this next bit. Fingerboard. F fretboard, I should say. Dry that off. I don't want to mix any of that with the glue I just put on. Not bad. Been cleaned in the not too distant past by the looks of it or by the feel of it. Tuners are all clean, nothing worry to worry about there. Um, so, thank you. So if you find you've got a really mucky bit, like round, or well anywhere really, you can put a bit of this stuff on. Perhaps not too much. It isn't expensive, but it's really sticky around here. So I'm going to definitely do some on the top edges here. So I'm going to start with these edges where you can't actually see, but I can feel it cutting its way through the stuck-on grime. Sound like a very liquid ad. Baked on grime. It's very effective, which is why it's so bleeding expensive, this stuff. exciting gra graphically, visually, but this stuff is very effective. You don't have to 
kind of work at it for hours. You just need to get get it on, rub it in a bit, and it does the removal of the goo very effectively. save a clean cloth that's going over it a bit later and then we can now work on this edge turn that one down a bit yeah so I think longer term this would benefit from one of them bridge doctor fellas as well um, it's definitely bellying and could do with it They're fairly harmless. I don't think there's any, you know, it's a Stumac recommendation amongst other things. They, Dan Erlewin, Erlewine, Erlewine, seems to swear by them. And the ones I've used seem to have done a pretty good job, so I wouldn't be afraid of using one. I think, I think there's a, a bit of advice that I would add that I'm not sure Dan added in his write-up on them, and that is, he, he recommends not being afraid to crank the unit to make adjustments, you know. But um, I think there's some advice somewhere in there needed about letting it take effect and how long it takes to take effect, because I, I think on the one I did last, I gave it back too soon after having made quite extreme corrective um, alterations and I think I should have held on to it for a week which is what I'm going to be doing with Karen's Gibson when I fit one there because I think it was still the last one I did I think it was still adjusting after I gave it back to Beach and I think because of that by the time you got to play it I think it was the action was too low then which was disappointing really but I didn't anticipate it continuing to change, which probably you might say I should have done, but I kind of got it done and out in short order. A victim of hurrying, kind of. Right, so we get another cloth. We're almost used all these up again. Um, let's go through quite a few of these. Anyway, with a bit of a Nice rub down, it's all looking and feeling lovely. Bit of, bit of baked on grime there. This stuff is at the hand where the hand hits. Uh, where the hand hits on the after the scratch plate. I might just give that a little extra treatment because I think that's quite baked on here. saying to me, oh, why don't you just use T-cut? And I did an experiment on an old unloved guitar body and it was awful. It was the worst substance in the world to put on a guitar. So I never went near that again. And I still would, no matter how many people suggest it or might recommend it. So I'm going to restring this baby and we'll be ready for collection tomorrow. A bit cleaned up, a bit fresher. A new battery of slightly unknown quality. But see this? Oh this is this is asking me to do it a little bit of Hmm. Go on then, while we're at it. 
it has got quite a lot of baked in grime, sweat grime and stuff here. So we'll get it clean. If you wanted to, you could buff with this stuff, a little dab of this on and then buff away. Not necessarily the, the regular buffing compounds seem to do a pretty good job. You can hear the grime as it's sort of biting into it down here. Certainly around the, the armpit zone. And that's how you know when it's when it's working, you can hear that swish. And once it's cut through it, it goes quiet. Well, that's a, I don't know what that is, a sticker or something from some time in the past. stuff on here it's struggling it doesn't want to come off fully baked on as the ads would have it well I'll leave that or whatever it is it's going to stay there because I don't want to cut through to the uh, primer or something whilst trying to get it off because I don't know what it is to get it off so I'm not going to make that my responsibility there we go lovely right I'm going to whew, gain a breath replace the tuners and then go around the back do the screws up and we'll restring and stretch out and we'll be ready. Um, again, the damage on these frets from play wear is not such that I would um, do anything to them. Um, it's not bad enough to affect play, it's, a, it's cosmetic. <sighs> While people may not like the way it looks, uh, in my book it's not a bad enough situation to for me to be willing to exchange fret metal in, in exchange for just a cosmetic improvement. If it was a play issue, then you know, it would be worth it, but it isn't, so it isn't. Okay, so. done anything to this because it's um, what's the word mm, sanded back it will it'll hold and grip the uh, um, cleaning stuff might make it mucky so I don't want to run that risk one Um, so the amount I'm going to take off the saddle is going to be very small indeed. I'm just going to 
run it up and down a couple of times. Going for a, a trip to Morrison's, followed by the final episode of Count Dracula. Oh yes, how fun! Okay, quick hang up. Today, and I'm going to do a quick measure. Measure. Treble end, 576. Did I say treble end? Yeah. T, 576. Base end, 717. Yeah, where did I take that measurement? All right. Let's do it at the same place, just for fun. Or the same place each time is what I mean. So zero seven eighty two down the base side six forty seven on the travel side. Okay. So I'm going to take a small amount of this off. Um, I'm going to do it same on both sides. So okay, that's as much as I want. To take off in big chunks. So a quick check. side 752.3 of a mil that's cool take a bit more okay and down the treble side we're looking at 598 it's half a mil good half a mil exactly fine that's all I want to do Flatten this out, just double check it here, all looks good. Tiny bit of lean to the front on the treble edge. Squared, squared. Squared, squared. That's that. That's all I wanted to do. so easily which is the clean bit that's probably the clean bit that's why <laughs> black you see man in black mr cash i blame you all right some very old looking box of martin strings and 12 to 50 four Okay, coming at it in pairs? Yes, we are. Good, fine. Pairs is, is it one and threes and, no, it's one, two and three. No, hang on, you're kidding me. Six and three, yeah, it is. 
one and three. Odd pairs, if you get what I mean. These got some rust marks on them. They've been sitting around too long, bro. They may not be ideal. Um, these paper wrap things just never are the business, I'm afraid. But you need foil wrapped kids. Okay. Steve, if you ever watch this, I want you to follow my instructions when you look, when you come to restring get all your ducks in a row first make the job easier get all your holes lined up in line with the neck I suppose direction of the strings then I want you to go all the way through Taut, and then come back one fret's worth and hold it and then start winding hold held string over the top of the loose string and then as it comes around again direct the held string under the spare loose string and by the time it comes around the second time it's kind of formed a, a little lock on it like that and so you've got locked off um, string with the least amount of wire around it to give you problems with storing up the slack. I'm pushing these pegs in as far as they seem to want to go and they look quite high. Hello Morris. Quite high to me but I'll do. Pull back one fret on all of them and just fractionally over one fret on the plain strings. So the nice thing is you get a uniformity they all look exactly the same. But more than that, it is that you don't store up too much slack, which will, it's what causes your tuning instability. Um, and it's the slack eking itself out that's the, the problem. Now the, the half a millimeter of the bridge will translate to about a third of a millimeter, no, no, what would it be, a quarter, yeah, about a third of a millimeter at the, at the last fret, as I like to measure it, or, or a quarter of a millimeter change in action at the twelfth fret. So it's just a, uh, there's room for improvement on this guitar, which is why I did it. Um, eventually, there won't be any more saddle room for improvement, and we'll be into wanting to uh, correct it with the bridge doctor. Now this one's a bit harder, but you have to hold tight with your thumb, then slack off as the spare comes round, let it go over, hold it tight, keep going round, bend it up, and then you with your finger gymnastics, keep it taut and feed it, feed it under. Like that. And then keep checking the pegs at the other end. On this guitar they do seem to sit up quite high by default, um, so it's not the end of the world. On some guitars that would mean that they're not seated properly to begin with. Get it tight, slack, let the spare, sometimes the spare doesn't want to go under, so you have to physically steer it. And then <laughs> held one under the slack one for the second time round. Until it chops your own finger off. Now that felt a 
bit tight that the way that went into that slot so I'm kind of concerned I might want to open these slots up a little bit um, it's one of the things I've learned over the years that makes quite a bit of difference uh, everybody seems to get obsessed with the idea of you know these perfectly straight walled deep set slots or straight walled slots if you can have them at all they want them to be rigidly vertical the problem with that is the, the, the a deep cut slot with vertical sides actually tends to cause gripping. It's much better for the string to be sitting in a, a very gentle tip of a V than it is to be in a in a deep slot, uh, in a, a straight walled slot. Um, so that means taking away. It means uh, opening up the slot a bit with a V file, but it also means if you can be bothered it means taking down the excess material now this is actually pretty well cut at the moment so I'm not too worried but if I felt it was gonna any of these were gripping I would be going at it with the, this I've done it for those two already as you saw but I'm just god this thing dust gets on it immediately <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is give it a, just a standard pull, like on the Telecaster, same deal. And just keeping an eye on the bridge so that the pegs don't start to worm their way out or anything like that. Okay. So that again, like the electric guitar, the stretching part of the strings is so critical. I recommend, I uh, see there's rust on here, that's not good, these strings have slightly had it my boy, you're going to need to change these again Stephen, I mean you play them for a while, they're not on where you'd be playing, but the paper, paper old paperback strings, they just don't, they don't stay fresh enough, paper wraps I should say, um, Some 12 to 54 is but they're a bit chunkier on the bottom maybe I mean these aren't bad except there's just a little spot of rust down there and it won't matter if it only bother me if I was you know if I had my hands on it um, it's not ideal what you can do is you can get a little bit of this <laughs> a little bit of this stuff and we'll get it a tiny bit on this one spot. Teach it a little lesson, you see. Considerably. There's another little bit on that string too. But that's got rid of most of it. Just as a remedial, I don't want to waste a whole set of new strings just on one rust, rusty one, frankly. But that's that's tidied that up. There you go. Right. 
Um, yeah, so when you're really strong, get the strings and between thumb and forefinger, press and stretch. Kind of do it quite hard. Obviously, you don't want to yank the strings and stress the points where they go over the bridge nut or the saddle, but with the thumb and forefingers, you can get quite a bit of force into it. And you'll see in a minute how much that detunes the strings. And if you, if it's detuning the strings, then you're getting the slack out of it now instead of when you're playing it. And that's how you just keep it in tune from the outset. Um, but it hurts the fingers, especially on the big gauge, well, relatively large gauge jumbo acoustic strings.
a great sound. There's no doubt about it. It's a spectacular sounding guitar. I can't do it justice, but hey, hey, I'd still enjoy it. And I'd probably spend my entire life playing Queen's Year of 39 on it. <laughs> Who wouldn't? back it's so powerful and that's that